Hey guys, today I thought I'd show you how to repair one of the most common forms of damage to the bat houses, uh, our fully finished bat houses uh, that we encounter. This typically happens because it's dropped. Um, so when you're hanging these up, be careful. Uh, don't uh, have anybody underneath you while you're handling the bat house up in the air. Uh, but quite often they, they do occasionally get dropped for whatever reason and they hit the ground and it causes a specific type of damage. Uh, rarely they do get damaged in shipping as well uh, and it, we see basically the same type of damage where it's been dropped or taken an impact and it takes a lot of force to do this kind of damage to them but I'm going to show you if this happens to you if you're uh, maintenancing yours or trying to hang it if this happens it's not the end of the world I've not had one yet that couldn't be repaired uh, and I'm going to show you how we go about repairing them so first thing that I got is a two chamber back house here that needs to be damaged uh, and I'll show you how that happens here. Now what will typically happen is that this part here will get hit on the ground when it's dropped. And I've already tried to start damaging this one, but I'm going to go ahead and do it a little bit more here. Uh, this hurts, by the way. It just seems wrong. That's probably about right. What will typically happen is it will fall, and if it hits in any other way, it's generally fine. But if it just happens to hit like that as it hits the ground, that's the type of damage that we typically see. And in varying degrees, that's about the amount of damage that's there. Now, it may cosmetically uh, still be blemished when we're done repairing it, but we can go a long way toward making sure that it's stable, that water won't get in it, it won't rot, and more importantly, water won't get inside the bat house. It'll still be nice and dry for the bats. So the first thing we're going to do is just take the shingle that's damaged off. I'll show you what uh, sealant we're using. It's a very tenacious sealant that takes about 24 hours to dry and you can pick it up from a home improvement store. But what we'll do is we'll just peel this damaged shingle off and you can take a knife if you like, especially if you have a bat knife, and you can cut the bead here to keep from pulling the whole bead out. All I'm doing is getting that shingle off and we'll cut the bead here. Now the shingles you can get at the, well I'm just going to have to tell you brand names and store names so you'll know what to do, but this is a color called Weathered Gray from Home Depot. And the tab part of the shingle is the gray part. The black part of the shingle is the back part of it. And you can typically buy these uh, in single repair shingles. Typically they'll sell them for a couple of dollars each so you can go pick up a shingle or if you have any shingle usually the back the black part will match close enough and all you do is you cut it in a five inch by two and three quarter inch square. That's all that is. The little staples that are holding it we can pull those out I like to pull them out when I'm working on them so that I can put more staples in without hitting these staples. And they can be tenacious too. Nothing about this bat house is designed to come apart easily. And if it's damaged to the point that the you think the whole roof has to be replaced, um, Probably not going to be that easy because the same adhesive sealant is used all the way around the roof. And I have disassembled one before and gotten this roof off. Uh, it is a lot of work to do that. And I had to destroy the roof panel to do it. But for this type of a repair, this is easy. And this is flat enough, the sealant that's there, that should be good. 
So what we're going to do now, you can see that this is essentially split and just bent down. And there's varying degrees of this damage. Usually it's right on this corner. What you want to do is kind of bend it back up in place. You can even take a hammer. Bend it back up into place. Doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, you want to get it close. And more importantly, the PL that we use, uh, it's called Proline PL, it's polyurethane sealant for roof and flashing. It's owned by Loctite now. Um, this is the most tenacious sealant adhesive that I have found. It takes about 24 hours to cure. And what we're going to do And again, if it's a little cosmetically damaged, it's not that big of a deal. You know, be careful not to damage the other side while you're working on it. Uh, it's not that big of a deal if it's got a little bit of cosmetic damage. It's just more important to make sure that it's sealed and weather tight. And this Just inject it into the crack out on the edge. Anywhere there's a bit of a crack, we'll just smear this in. And these are optional. You can use uh, masking tape, uh, different types of clamps, but I really like these spring clamps. They're about 99 cents each usually. You can pick some of them up. You can even get the smaller ones. All I'm going to do just kind of pinch this, pinch it first there, now we can get some of that excess off and don't worry about the excess, you can smear it into the bat house itself, there's a little bit of a crack there, we'll smear that in. And once this is on here and we get the clamp on it, we're going to let it dry, cure for 24 hours. And you can even use a little putty knife. This will seal it, weatherproof it, and add some strength to it so that it won't separate again. Now up underneath, this one's in pretty good shape, but if you do notice that the roof has separated from the house any, uh, you can simply run a small bead there, wipe that in, and essentially you just want to make sure that it's sealed good so that it is air and water tight for when it goes back outside. Do here. Pinch that in again. As long as it stays, you don't necessarily have to leave the clamp on. Like right here is where I'm going to leave this clamp if you want to zoom in. You can see when I take the clamp off it opens back up a little bit. When I clamp it, it goes back on. So what I'm going to do is smooth this and that's going to be the shape that I leave it in. And we'll leave this clamp on and come back to this and finish this video tomorrow. And all I'm doing is shaping it 
so that it'll be decent looking. So we're going to let this cure and we'll pick this up tomorrow after this is cured for 24 hours. I'll show you uh, how durable it is and we'll finish it up by putting another shingle on it and we'll show you, you know, throwing some paint on it and all we get done. It'll be good as new. Okay, well it's been 24 hours. It's cured. It's still a little bit tacky to the touch, but that's fine. And you'll see that I added a second clamp. Uh, we noticed a little bit of a gap in the front. Put a little bit of uh, sealant in there and put a second clamp on it and we'd let it set overnight. And now we're going to take the clamps off. You may have to wiggle them a little bit, uh, but the, the plastic will generally release from the adhesive. And we'll carefully pull those off. Okay. And you can see it made a decent edge. And you can see it didn't separate back out. It's still a little springy because the material is rubbery. But it's filled it in. No water is going to be able to get in there. And we'll check it over. It looks good to me. So it's time to replace the shingle. Now we did, uh, like I showed you, we cut the bead off of the back here to make sure that that was nice and clean and won't interfere. This is fine. It'll stay flat to the original level of the shingle. Now the shingle that you took off, if it's in good enough condition and you don't mind it, you can actually put it back and reuse that shingle. Over here you can see it's just kind of clipped off flush to the edge, which is fine. You can add a little bit of uh, adhesive here and let it squeeze out to seal it. And if you want to reuse that shingle, you certainly can. But what I'm going to do is put on a new shingle. And again, you can go to Home Depot. It's weathered gray is the color that we use. Most of them will sell a single uh, shingle for spot repairs, typically for about 2 or $3.00 and you just cut this square out. And what I did was I saved the staples that I pulled. Uh, you can use small roofing tacks if you want to. Uh, just when you drive the one on the side over here, drive it so that it's in on the body of the house and not out hanging over because it will dimple the bottom of the board a little bit. And you want to get nothing longer than half inch. Um, but if you pull those staples out, you can reuse them. All I did was I took a pair of needle nose pliers I positioned them and I got them stuck in the shingle where I wanted them and that makes it ready to tack onto the back house. Now what I'm going to do here is I am going to add some sealant but I'm going to add it in the area where there's not already sealant. This keeps me from having to peel this off. If I, if I put it on top of this I'll have to peel it off to get down to the same level. But by putting it outside of this, it just brings the shingle up to that same level. And it's, it's important to have a reasonable amount out on the edge of the bat house. As opposed to here, there's just a couple of strips. Here, I turn and make that closed end to make sure that this is secure and the wind can't get under it. Then you simply position the shingle back on there set it up. it would probably be best, I'm going to try to nail it here on the bench, but typically I would set it on the floor so I was driving down onto something a little more solid, but we'll see here. Oh, that's not bad. There we go. That's back on and repaired. And what we'll do is this bead, I cut it off square. You can see this bead that runs across here that acts like a water seal. And it makes it look prettier than just leaving it like it was. Then just take your finger, run it. Use a paper towel to clean up. And it doesn't have to be perfect. All you want to do is get it so there's no gaps where water can get in. I see a small one there. And that's it for the major part of the repair. You can just let that dry. You can leave this uh, smeared caulk up on the bat house. It's not going to hurt anything. Let it dry. This caulk is paintable. So once this fully cures, if you want to, on this one there's really no need to except for cosmetics. Um, 
the sealant that we have on here has covered everything so far as anything that's not painted. So if you're you know, putting this out in an orchard somewhere where it's not going to be seen, uh, you know, feel free to hang it just like it is. It'll be fine. But you can get the paint um, to put on here to decorate this back out and make it look like it was not damaged at all. And what we'll do is I'll add a uh, description. We get the, the paint that we use is from Sherwin-Williams. It's called Duration. It's their highest quality paint that they have. Um, and there's a color code for it. And what we'll do is we'll add it uh, into the video here. Uh, somewhere around here I'll make it up in a little text so you can read it. Uh, put it in the description. But you can also take the, the whole house, I guess, to a paint store and uh, let them match the color or the matching cleat that comes with it is painted you can simply take it with you and let them match that color all you want is a good exterior latex paint um, put a, a good coat on it you can even repaint the whole back house if you want to but hopefully well hopefully your back house won't get damaged in the first place especially not like this but if it does it's a fairly simple repair uh, if it's the edge of the roof here and if you do repair one of them, uh, you know, send us a video clip of it or send us some pictures. We'll, we'll put that up and show other people what you've been able to do. And uh, I guess that's it for this video. If you've got any questions, let us know.